I'm uh, Dave Jones, and I'm the CEO of Storm Center Communications. We have been around since 2001. Uh, we do a lot of technology development. As a matter of fact, we invented a new technology called GeoCollaborate. GeoCollaborate allows us to connect anybody's computer together on a web browser, just using a web browser, and we can, through a lead, take control of everybody's maps, zoom into anywhere around the world, and access and display data. So everybody is on the same map at the same time looking at the same data. I knew I wanted to be a meteorologist when I was six years old. Uh, and so I've been on that track of what can we do and how can we use data to inform people, warn people, educate people about how they can use data to make better decisions. And so that's really um, a, a core to people reacting to warnings or watches or storms moving towards them or climate change making big impacts on people's lives. And if they don't understand it, uh, we're prepared to start to teach them a little bit about it. I'm a founding member in <laughs> 1997 uh, when ESIP first formed. Uh, it was formed by NASA funding 24 projects. Uh, they brought us all together in Washington, D.C and they said, hey, congratulations on winning your proposals. Uh, one other thing that we're gonna be doing uh, over this next three to four years, uh, you're all gonna be working together. <laughs> so that was quite a surprise. You know, when the ESIP first started, uh, it was called the ESIP Federation, and um, it was all about federated activities. How can the sum of the parts be greater than the whole? One of the big things that we talked about in ESIP from the very start is People who would participate in ESIP were getting funded by NASA to do particular, you know, specific work. So what would make a, a, a person want to stay associated with ESIP if their funding went away? And so for me, uh, the benefits of ESIP uh, are the ability to collaborate and talk with other members that are coming to meetings and other people that want to start clusters and and get uh, meetings rolling in certain areas. So the benefit to me is that I feel like I have a whole staff of 160 organizations out there that I can turn to and ask any questions uh, of. You know, I can talk about machine learning, AI, talk about how data is handled, how it's preserved, how it's accessed. Um, and so ESIP is a great home for that. I think ESIP has a great future in front of it. Uh, there are so many organizations that want to be a part of ESIP because we talk deep technical issues. Uh, we can talk communication issues, outreach issues, education uh, issues, and we our foundation is data. So once you have that foundational knowledge of data, then you can move in any direction that you want to satisfy anybody else's needs. So there's a great foundation at ESIP and they have a great, great future ahead of them. The first time attendees are essential because they bring questions, they bring curiosity, uh, they bring uh, a wealth of knowledge from their perspective into ESIP. And it's critical because uh, when you have people that have been in ESIP as long as I have, you know, you've learned a lot of things along the way, uh, but you're not so sure of what's going on with the latest uh, sort of information or technology. And so just by talking and engaging with first time attendees is really beneficial. If you ever thought about having a research and development arm for your company or your organization, but you couldn't afford it, come to ESIP. That is the ability for uh, so many scientists to give you input that you can then build upon and start your journey, whether it's a small business, whether it's a new area of a university you want to start going, or whether it's uh, something that you're doing in research. You know, come to ESIP, ask questions, and it'll feel like they're part of your extended research and development arm.